Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper. I'm here for Gerda Steiner Designs today and we're going to be creating a scene. Now I have the O Manatee set. It's a really sweet, she does the best critter stamps and this Manatee set's heaps of fun. I have made a couple of cards today using this set but I'm only showing one here on the video so if you head through the link in the description below you'll be able to see the other card that I've made um, using the Manatee. Alright, so what I thought would be fun I like to look at a stamp set and see what the small images because often I overlook them and just see the big sort of the main images of a set but a lot of stamp sets have a lot of small images that can be used uh, just as easily or in conjunction with other stamp sets to create some some fun cards. So there were some really cute little fish stamps in this set and I thought it'd be really fun to make a fish tank <laughs> so what I did was just um, created my fish tank with some Bristol smooth cardstock just masked off the background and used some tumble glass distress ink to sort of color that up I've stamped out just a small portion of the seaweed on each side of the fish tank just to make it look a bit more fish tanky and now I have stamped out three of the fish images and I have come in with my Copic multi-liner and actually changed them up a little bit just to add some fun to my fish tank. So this is Nemo, you might have heard of him. <laughs> He's an anemone, anemone fish, uh, clownfish depending on what you want to call it. We have lots of them around here where I live on the coral reefs and they are just beautiful. And they really are this bright orange it's amazing like Copic Y17 <laughs> anyway so I did color up my fish in some funky colors added some stripes to my tiger fish and then what I like to do is come in with my gray markers so this is the TO I came in and actually added some shading with that so the present image that I've got here comes from the Moody Unicorns stamp set and so does the sentiment that I'll be using today but you won't see that till a bit later on. I had a bit of a sentiment sort of um, what do you call it crisis <laughs> today. I knew which sentiment I wanted to use I just really struggled with how I was going to incorporate it into the card. Alright so I am outlining the back of my images just because I did fussy cut them right up to the line. I thought it'd be fun just to add some bubbles to one of the little fish that's swimming and then I figured it was going to be easier I have, don't really color with my Copics onto any other sort of ink I've seen other people do it but I would have a tendency to either use my Copics and then add my other colors afterwards so that's why I came in here with my Prismacolor pencils to add the colouring to the seaweed and of course to the bubbles. So now I'm going to actually adhere my little fish into place. I've just got some dotted adhesive and this is quite forgiving this adhesive so you have got the opportunity to move them around a little bit if you're not quite happy with the placement of your images. I find that it sticks well though after it's sort of settled in but initially you can actually move things around if you're not really happy. Some tapes are very unforgiving uh, especially on like a distress ink background. You don't want to rip that because they are quite a wet um, a wet ink the distress inks. Now I've just got this little um, Nemo's actually the one giving the present today. Isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> Alright so I've added some really thin Be Creative tape to the bottom of my fish tank and this is how I'm going to hold my piece of acetate in front. I just wanted it to look shiny like it's glass and then I've got some some tape behind a piece of bark. This is um, some cherry wood I think it is and I've just cut a really thin piece of that um, to make the base of my fish tank. And I used the same cardstock or the bark cardstock to cut some legs for my fish tank, which I'm just going to adhere with some Be Creative tape as well because it's a nice strong tape. 
You could use a liquid glue here that would hold it really well. You just don't want to squish it out onto the acetate because you'll be able to see it. And dry tape is much quicker. Right, so I'm making a panel to go up on the front of my card and this is some really old design paper out of my stash. I just wanted something to look like it was kind of like a retro wallpaper and this is from a um, my mind's eye paper pad called Gertie and I think I was hoarding this because it's so cute it's some really pretty patterns in this and I've hoarded it so much that you can't even get it anymore <laughs> I've got some if anyone wants any though and this is the first time I've used I can't remember the last time I used my corner chomper but um, I used this smaller edge I think it's the quarter inch edge on my panel and then I've just popped it up with some orange fun foam just because orange is fun and it's fun foam <laughs> and I'm going to adhere this on the front of a top fold card so it's a little bit uh, smaller than a normal Australian size card it's more like an American size card this one and then I've just used some foam squares to pop up my fish tank and you can see here I thought I was going to do my sentiment in two pieces um, ignore that because what I decided to do and this is what I originally wanted to do I just didn't know how I was going to do it I wanted to create a mat for my scene and the other sentiment just wasn't working for me so I'm stamping that it's um like I said from the moody unicorn set and this is just on some other design paper from the same paper pad and I'm cutting it on kind of an angle to make it look like not three-dimensional but um, that it fits into the room scene that I created. I kept cutting that cardstock all the way along and then actually cut some pieces off to create tassels on the edges of my mat and that worked really well. I was really happy how this turned out and by doing it as a separate piece of cardstock I could just offset it slightly to make it look more 3D and I just love the way this turned out. So I did that on both sides of the map. And I thought the stripes worked really well for a matte kind of effect as well. <laughs> and I wanted something that you could see the sentiment on after I'd stamped it. If it was too busy, you wouldn't have been able to see it. So I just popped my little mat up on the front of my card and that's my finished card for today. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to head to the blog where you'll see the other card I've made using this Omanity set. Look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.